Hey guys, I'm Nat. And I'm Ashton. And we, we are, are the, the Nerds, Nerds in Flannel. Flannel. Guys, welcome back. Uh, so, full disclaimer, uh, this is our second time recording this episode <laughs> because uh, technology sucks sometimes. It does. And uh, it also doesn't help when you don't hit record for about 25 minutes of what you're recording. And uh, yeah, so we're going to do this again. Uh, but this, what are we doing today, Ashton? What are we doing today? Well, Nat... A lot of movies have come out this year, and we've gone to see a lot of these movies. So, you know, kind of now that we're in the halfway mark of the year, actually we're far past the halfway mark. We're closer to 2023 now than we are, you know, the beginning of 2022, which is wild. Uh, But we are going to be talking about some of our favorite movies, 10 plus two honorable mentions, so 12 to be exact, Favorite movies to come out in this past year. Yes, yes. As, as Ashton said, we saw a lot of movies. You know what? Here's my flex. I saw way more movies than you did. Okay, story. okay. You know, but you watch a lot more TV than I did. <laughs> and I'd probably play more video games too. Yeah, probably, honestly. Uh, so here's... It's, it's going to work like it usually does. We're going to go back and forth. Honorable mention um, at the beginning of the list. And then another one in the middle of the list. So that, you know, we're not giving you just 12 movies in a row. And yeah, let's do it. Um, I'll, how about you go first, Ashton? You're the guest in my house. We're, we're in my basement again, if you're listening. The Vancouver on, Studio. Yeah, our Vancouver Studio, if you're listening on Spotify. If you're watching on YouTube, hi. Um, yeah, Ashton's wearing a Spider-Man shirt. I'm not wearing anything really nerdy or even flannel because, let's be real, it's like 30 degrees out right now. <laughs> and uh, I'd rather not. So, Ashton, what is an honorable mention for you from 2022? Well, my first honorable mention is a movie that it's hard to sum this one up because you wouldn't think it would be like a very fun entertaining movie for someone who doesn't have a kid but it really was uh we went to go see this one i think this is the last movie we saw together just before or just kind of at the end of uh school yeah the end of the school year for us which was in like late march or whatever And that movie is The Bad Guys. (laughs) Yeah. So this movie, uh, yeah, it's an animated movie. Uh, I believe this one is uh, from DreamWorks as well. Yes. And it was just a lot of fun. Like, we went to go see this uh, with a few other people. And it was just, it was a good time. Uh, It kind of tells the story of, uh, you know, it's a typical bad guys gone good. And these guys are bad because they've been perceived as bad and scary their whole lives. So there's like a bit of a societal message. But, you know, overall, it kind of like, it's just a fun ride. It is. Uh, Great voice acting, great animation. I love the look of this movie. Uh, Just really well done all around. Um, You know, you don't have to see this movie with a kid. You don't have to see this movie um, sort of if you're like, if, if you think... I don't even know what I'm going to say. Watch <laughs> this okay, movie. Bro. Don't be scared too if you're even if you're not a kid. That's that's what I'll put it. It's a fun family movie, so if you want to watch this with your family as well, go do that. Um yeah, we enjoyed it. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, no. That guy was a really fun film. Went with a fellow podcaster Erica Heise as well, even though she passed out like halfway through. <laughs> but uh, we don't talk about that. Um thank you Ashton. Um my first honorable mention is a film that I actually uh, I actually went to see by myself. Oh. And um, at the beginning of the movie, there was ten people in the theater, so nine including me. And wait, did I say at the beginning? At the beginning, yes, at the beginning of the movie, there was ten people. At the end, I was the only one left. I was the only one left in this theater. Wow. And uh, yeah, I mean, this movie is very. I want to say controversial. It got a lot of controversy uh, because of the subject matter. And that movie is Crimes of the Future, uh, directed by David Cronenberg, who does very experimental, experimental films. Like he did Crash and a few other movies as well. And uh, it, it's kind of like this uh, futuristic movie where people are, you know, you, people are dying because there's no not many resources. So they have to, like, gen- um, have, like, re- machine parts inside their body so like um they can eat like metal so that it gives them energy and uh 
there's some very graphic imagery in this movie. Like, um, I don't want to say too much just because, you know, this is a family friendly one. Uh, but it's more, it's very shocking um, in some scenes, especially in the first like 30 seconds. I think a lot of people, the people beside me, were kind of grossed out. And uh, yeah, it just, it's, it's really good. I don't, want, I don't want people to think like it's a bad movie. You shouldn't go see it because of, like there's gore and stuff. Well, very well shot. Um, Viggo, Morten- Viggo Mortensen's in it from Lord of the Rings, obviously. Leah, Leah Sadu from, uh, she's been in the James Bond movies and a few other movies. And uh, Christian Stewart, Academy Award nominee Christian Stewart's in this. So I highly recommend that you go see it for the acting uh, and the cinematography. Yeah, Crimes of the Future. Dope. All right, let's hop into uh, the actual top 10 list. Uh, Ashton, why don't you kick us off with number 10? Okay. Well, for my number 10, uh, this is a movie that we saw a while back. uh, Kind of, yeah, back in the spring or whatever. Uh, And, you know, this movie, I had certain expectations going into this. Because, you know, the director has a very specific reputation. Not a bad one, not a good one. Just kind of, he's known for what he does. Um, And... I just didn't really know what to expect with it. Uh, But I overall really enjoyed it. It was very thrilling while also, you know, having a really great story and also having a lot of awesome, like, practical and special effects. And that movie is Ambulance. Oh, yeah. Michael Bay's Ambulance. So the premise of this movie is pretty much there's uh, these two brothers. One of them has a family and he's desperate for help. His other brother is a criminal they got in trouble back in the day together kind of broke off a bit and he's going to his brother for help his brother needs him for one job to like do this big bank robbery and unfortunately for them um the bank robbery doesn't go as planned their whole team dies they're the only two alive and they have to escape in an ambulance indeed yes (laughs) so you wouldn't really think that that would be like you know, a very fun thing to watch for, like, what, two hours or whatever. Like, a police chasing an ambulance. But it's very good. There's a lot of tension. There's a lot of strategy. It's very, like, character-driven. Um, and it just overall does a really great job of delivering just an awesome experience. Uh, Jake Gyllenhaal's in this movie. I forget who some of the other actors are. Uh, El- Eliza Gonzalez, yeah, something like that, and uh, Mateen the third. I can't remember the first name, but that's his like he has like a hyphenated name, so it's like something Mateen the third or something like that. Yeah, yeah, and yeah, you know the acting is like on point. Just a lot of the, a lot of the the action sequences catch you off guard, and you know Michael Bay, he has a reputation for kind of overdoing a lot of practical effects or at least going really big with them, getting a really big budget and doing a lot of that stuff, especially with explosions or even just even CGI stuff as well. Uh, and, you know, in this movie, it's very tasteful. Like, it's still there. There's still a lot of it, but it's not as excessive as you would think it would be, which I quite enjoyed about this it didn't distract from the movie it just kind of added to the experience which you know he struck a really great balance there i would say this is probably one of my favorite michael bay films uh at least in a long time yeah no like 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 ashton said it's i think the best part about this movie is like it's pretty heartfelt uh there are there's one like emotional moment where it's the brothers talking and it's kind of like giving each other closure and it's really nice to see because, you know, obviously Michael Bay films don't give you that, like, emotional impact impact like you think it would. Uh, but, you know, this one's good. Yeah. Highly recommend it. Probably his best film since their first Transformers. Ooh. Can we even call that a good movie? Hmm. Or uh, was, was on with The Rock and uh, Mark Wahlberg, Pain and Gain, or something like that? Oh, yeah, yeah. I don't know if that was him, but it feels like it. <laughs> Either way, great movie. If you're not typically a fan of Michael Bay films, you'll be surprised. Go yes. see it. Yes. Go go give it a watch. We'll watch it with you. Yeah. Um, that brings me to my my tenth favorite movie of 2022 so far. So far. Okay. Uh, I love British things. Like I love tea, and I love British people. 
Uh, <laughs> my tenth favorite movie of 2022 so far is Downton Abbey: A New Era. Uh, Ashton, I do not believe you have seen this movie. Nope. Okay. I haven't seen much of Downton Abbey. I've watched a bit with my like cousin and sister, but I haven't really. I'm not caught up to anything. I haven't okay. given it a watch in a long time. Yeah, I'm pretty much. I'm caught up, and I've seen the movie before this, and obviously now this one. Uh, this movie is just a very good um, ensemble type of movie where all the actors and actresses are really just like they are the they are the characters now because they've been doing this ro- these roles for like the last like decade. And uh, this movie is has very good emotional beats, especially if you know the characters' backgrounds and everything. Um, but honestly, this is kind of a movie I forgot about it. <laughs> um, and uh, the reason is because it is very slow. Uh, it's often very sluggish for, for the first half an hour. And I think that really kind of kills it a little bit. And that's why I didn't put it higher. Uh, but it looks great for a TV, technically a TV movie or a movie based on a TV show. Uh, but, you know, it's great. Give it a watch if you are into Downton Abbey. If not, you can skip this one. But, you know, this is our list, so who cares? <laughs> <laughs> we say what we want to say. Yes. Uh, Ashton, number nine for you, buddy. Yeah. So number nine, uh, I'm going with. Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness. Ooh, low, low. Pretty low. So yeah, I feel like some people might be a little shocked about how low this one is. Um, and the reason is, I mean, I talked about it in the review and pretty much every Marvel review since then. But honestly, I'm just kind of starting to feel a little tired of like, you know, Marvel movies that I have to like do homework to actually watch the next one. Uh, you know, like for this one going into it, you need to watch like WandaVision you need to watch, uh, like, Endgame and just have that whole context of all this other stuff. It's not a movie that you can really take new people to or interested people. Uh, you know, like, I'm, even people that want to remember this sort of thing. Like, it's not a movie I'd take my parents to see just because they would be so confused the whole time. Right. And, yeah. like, they loved WandaVision, but they couldn't, like, tell you much about what they remember from that show. And this movie kind of demands that you remember a lot of those you know, emotional things that happens there. Um, yeah, you know, I think overall, though, it was a great movie uh, for, like, a Marvel movie as well. Uh, it was very awesome to see them take the risk of going to more of this thriller-slash-horror genre. And I also just really loved a lot of the editing and shots and effects. You know, a lot, a lot of that stuff, uh, you know, in recent Marvel movies hasn't been as fleshed out and polished. But Sam Raimi, the director for this one, did a phenomenal job. He knows how to do horror movies. He knows how to shoot those things properly. Uh, He also knows how to do comic book movies. He made the first uh, three Spider-Man movies with uh, Tobey Maguire. And yeah, great movies. Yes. He just he knows how to work well with characters and also like based off of source material as well as like throw his own original twist in there. And I think for what we got, it was awesome. Also, just like a lot of the other things, like, you know, seeing the Illuminati and the MCU for the first time, albeit like in a different multiverse, was also just really cool. And there's a lot of unexpected things that if you, you know, if they're not not already spoiled for you yet by this point, because Marvel movies tend to be spoiled even a week before release. Um, yeah, I think you'll you'll appreciate some of this stuff. It's It's pretty crazy. Yeah, uh, and our uh, our theater was pretty good. Yeah, our so, theater was yeah. like, man, they were just popping off. Like, we went, like, jur- the middle of the day on, like, a Friday or whatever. Yeah, one, and o- one o'clock on a Friday. One o'clock on a Friday. Still, like, during the school year and stuff for, like, most, like, high schoolers and whatnot. And people were still, like, just popping off. It was yeah. so crazy. No, it was a good movie. Uh, I will talk about that later, but, you know. Um, yeah, you know, it was a very refreshing movie, mm. I want to say. It did have that Marvel Marvel spectacle, but, uh, it's like Sam, I love Sam Raimi, so, yeah, yeah we'll t- I'll talk more about that later, yeah. Uh, my number nine movie of 2022 so far is in, an animated movie, um, from Netflix. Okay. It's called The Wish Dragon. Now, it's... It's about this, you know, Chinese folklore where there's usually dragons in every folklore, right? 
Um, fun fact: um, the Chinese think that when there's when there's like thick li- when there's fog, um, they should use there's usually a dragon like resting and sharpening his teeth. Ooh! I always thought that was pretty cool, and I think that'd be a really cool premise for like a horror movie or something. That would be. Or yeah, right. So, shout out to my Chinese fans. <laughs> okay. <Yeah. laughs> um, yeah, I know this is an anime movie with uh, voice actors like Jimmy Wong, um, Constance Wu um, from Crazy Rich Asians, Michelle Yeoh, who's obviously been in a movie that we'll talk about later, um, and John Cho, who played uh, uh, Harold and Harold and Kumar, but also Suru on the new Star Trek movies. Uh, this movie is very, very charming. The animation style is very snappy, very colorful because of like the dragon's mystical powers. But it's also a, a movie about like what would you do with three wishes? Mm. It's basically Aladdin, but with Chinese folklore instead of like was it Egyptian or something like that, Arabic, something like that. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but this is a very heartfelt movie with a, with many, many comedic moments. And I highly recommend it to families who are looking for, looking for a good movie to watch on the weekend with your kids. You can show this to anyone. Show this to your grandma. She'll love it. And uh, yeah, The Wish Dragon on Netflix. Give it a watch. Sweet. Okay. Cool. Well, we're, just, we're just trucking along here, Just Ashton. going for it. Yeah. I guess I'll share my number eight. Wait, before we do that, Ashton, I want to ask you a question. Okay. okay. What was one movie that you thought was terrible that came out in 2022? I put you on the spot. People are going to hate me if they're really into memes. I'm very into memes, so I joke about this movie. I didn't even have to think that hard about this. Okay, I it's think, Morbius. I think that's the same one. It's Morbius. It's Morbius? It's Morbius. Yeah, it was bad. It was bad. We saw this on a Tuesday, and I feel I still feel ripped off. Yeah, we paid $7 for a movie, and, we, and I want my money back. Yeah. Yeah, I mean... It, like, what is there like, to say? It was just felt bland it felt like it it was a movie that fell asleep <laughs> yeah all memes aside like this movie sucked <laughs> i mean i'm gonna watch it again probably because i i it's it's for the memes and it's morbid time but uh yeah it didn't know what it wanted to do with itself uh you know even the whole michael keaton stuff at the end sony trying to take back one of their characters and do stuff to him it just it the explanation was just too confusing, didn't make sense, and it just feels like they were trying to do... They didn't know what they wanted to do with this movie. Uh, yeah. The director didn't even know that they had went in and uh, put a lot of other shots and special effects in over uh, what he had already done, which is kind of insane. Yeah. We did a whole review on this. Go check it out if you also hated this movie, or if you're just a very open-minded person. Um, hopefully you are if you actually enjoyed this. And Jared Leto was bad. Let's be real. It was bad. Yeah. He, you know, I don't mind him in some movies, but he, I think he was also just very confused. Yeah. Didn't know what he was trying to do. Yeah. All right. Anyways, thank you for answering the question. <laughs> just threw you a, a curveball there, you know, keep you on your toes, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but please tell us your number eight pick. So my number eight pick, uh, this is a movie that, you know, I think the timing of when we went to go see this for me, added to the overall experience of it. Uh, we at, at college, at Bible College, we have grad celebrations. And I happen to be part of the student planning for our big grad thing at the end of the school year. And it was fairly stressful with all the setup and staying late and missing one of the school parties and stuff. Um, so I ended up actually like Nat and I ended up going to see this movie uh, just the night before grad after, you know, a long day of setting up everything. And it really like, man, it really helped clear my mind, just kind of like focus me in on something else that I was just like super hyped about that I was like super into. Uh, this is a movie that we were like really interested in seeing anyway. And it was just fun. It, it was a very fun movie. Uh, that is the unbearable weight of massive talent. What Nick Cage. Movie. Nick Cage at in his prime. Yes. So for those who don't know, I don't know if you've been living under a rock and you haven't seen these in like, or the trailers in the theaters or whatever, or, you know, you haven't even seen some of the memes from it. 
this movie is pretty much about Nick Cage if he was sort of this like done you know failing actor and he's played by Nick Cage uh and it's just this awesome like action co- buddy comedy with uh Pedro Pascal if you don't know he's the Mandalorian and you know he does a lot of other amazing stuff as well he's, he's the, the villain in Wonder Kingsman. Woman yeah yeah which is pretty great couldn't tell you his character's name because that movie was Whiskey. so forgettable cool but yeah you know this movie was this one's great um i i want to see this one again so badly that's my one regret is i i didn't go back to watch this Dude, again we can rent it tonight i think it's like 2.99 on Apple. not bad might yeah. have to yeah but yeah you know this movie it gave us a lot of laughs uh it also just kind of it was so funny seeing if you watch a lot of Nick Cage movies, seeing a lot of references to some of his other stuff, as well as, uh, you know, just seeing so, uh, sort of like this super weird. It's not a biopic. It's not a documentary. It's this fiction written about an actor played by that actor, which is like you don't see a lot of those. So it was also different. It took risks. It was fun. And, you know, it's definitely kind of more tailored towards, I would say, like, maybe, like, teenagers and adults and young adults. So don't take your kids to see it. But don't take your youth group to see it. But take, you know, take some friends. Go see it, you know, with some some people that you can have some laughs with. It's pretty great. Yeah, you have to have a pretty, like, obscure sense of, like, humor with this type of movie. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, uh, give that a watch. Yeah. The Cage. Uh, Peter Pascal, I believe Tiffany Haddish is in it. Yeah, she is. She is. Yeah, she okay. is. If you don't know, she's a, she's a comedian actress. Um, yeah, she's trying to, yeah she she's done stand up. I think. I think so. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. Thanks, Ashton. Cool. All right. You're number eight. Yes. Um. So this is a movie that is a sequel to the last movie I saw before the pandemic happened. Um. And you know, it's it's a movie I saw. The, the 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 predecessor to this movie is a movie I've seen a few times. I love it. Um, it's very fun for me, based on one of my favorite video game characters of all time. And my number eight pick is Sonic the Hedgehog two. Ooh. Now, this movie is a lot more bombastic, a lot more intense than the the first movie, just because they added tails and knuckles to it. Which adds a very weird power dynamic between uh, now a trio of Sonic, Knuckles, and Tails. Because Knuckles is, is kind of, you know, bashed everything. I bowl through a china shop and Tails is like, Sonic, are you okay? Um, but, you know, uh, <laughs> uh, Sonic 2 is one of those movies where I was very excited for it. And uh, lived up to all my expectations because all... The, the soundtrack they used was very reminiscent of the score in video games and they made re- like physical and visual references to the video games as well more than the first one and Jim Carrey dialed it up to 11 for this movie and it's just really really fun to watch uh, I think this is one of my favorite roles that Jim Carrey's done in a long time and a lot of people like would back me up on that because it's good Yeah, and uh, it's just a really fun movie like, like the first few movies that we have to, that we talked about are like take your kids to go see it. So I think this one's is no exception. And yeah, that's I don't want to say too much, but go watch it. It's fun. Yeah, there yeah. we go. Sonic Two. I think, sorry, sorry, Sonic the Hedgehog Two. Oh boy, yeah. I think this one's also. I mean, I'm guilty because I still haven't seen it yet. Uh, this one is free on Paramount Plus. So if, you have if you're if you're able to get that week long trial or something, check this one out. Yes. Don't watch Halo though. Halo. Don't sucks. watch Halo. Um. Uh, <laughs> Ashen numero seven. Okay. What is it? So for me, my number seven mo- uh, movie pick from this year is a movie that came straight onto Netflix. Uh, it was shot locally here Ooh. in the Greater Vancouver area. Yes. Uh, yeah, it's featuring one of our most prized actors one of our most prized celebrities who's also from the vancouver area i think every straight dude has a crush on this guy what do you mean i don't 
I'm just gambling. That's why. Yeah, no, if 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 you if you don't, you're sus. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so this this movie is the Adam Project, um, featuring Ryan Reynolds, uh, Jennifer Garner, uh, Mark Ruffalo, Zoe Saldana, and it's just it's name a, one more. Can you name one more? Do I need one more? Can you name one more? I can I name one more? Can. I don't think I can. Okay, that's okay. Can you? <laughs> yeah. Who? Well, I'll talk about it later. Okay. Uh, those are those are like the big ones anyway. Sorry. Yeah, I like to keep Ash on his toes. The- so. <laughs> I was just lift- listing off the ones that everyone else would know. <laughs> You're missing a big one. A big one? I'm kidding. Well, okay. y- yes and no, but go ahead. Sorry. Like, dang. Um, yeah. So this movie, it was just a lot of fun. It's a fun family movie. Uh, it's a bit of a sci-fi, like time travel uh movie, and there's there's a lot of really great wholesome lessons that can come out of this movie. Uh, you know, the for starters, I, well, actually, I guess I'll kind of give a bit of a premise. Uh, so this one dude, his name's Adam. 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 Uh, his dad, uh, is the one who's played by Mark Ruffalo. Is the one who kind of figured out time travel however his dad ended up passing away from it was a car crash and he kind of grew up you know a bit of a troubled kid uh and yeah i get in the future the future is just messed up because of the discovery of time travel and grown-up adam travels back to meet his younger self his kid self and that kid is remarkable i don't know the actor's name but he was just such a remarkable dude. Like he played, he he's like a DH Ryan Reynolds. Yeah. Like he looks like him. He sounds like him. He acts like him. It's just it's just awesome. That even in the interviews. In the interviews, crazy. he even like quoted like the first scene of Deadpool, from memory. Oh yeah, no, it was double two. He he did a whole like two minute do- monologue. I think it I'm was like... the first Deadpool. Was it? No, no, no. It was the second was one it? because he was talking about si- sleeping on uh the diff- jet fuel but he was also talking about how he was gonna die in that movie oh, v2 yeah you know what you're right anyway <laughs> anyway anyway not, not the point <laughs> not, the, not point. the point um yeah so just terrific terrific uh movie and awesome like again awesome acting uh i watched this one with my family and you know, everyone came away from this saying, like, it was just awesome. It's one of the best comedies we've seen in a long time together. And it's, you know, it's it's a safe movie, too, I'd say. Like, if you're looking for something that's, you know, a little bit more... Maybe you have, like, teenagers, young adults, and you're watching it with, like, your kids. Uh, this is, like, a perfect movie to watch. I'd even say for, for certain ages of kids as well, check this one out. Um... But it's also, like, it's not supposed to be a kid's movie. It has, a, like, it's heavily inspired by, like, Back to the Future and some of these other, like, big 80s uh, and 70s movies. Like, even Star Wars, I would say, a bit. And uh, Hitchhiker Guide, Hitchhiker's, Hitchhiker's Guide, Guide to, the, to, the galaxy. to the Galaxy. Yeah. There you go. Uh, and, you that know, it's, this. I think Sean Levy directed this one as well. Yes. Uh, he also directed Free Guy with Ryan Reynolds. And he's, I think they're trying to get him to direct the third Deadpool. Yeah, so, did he, do, he did the first two, right? No, I think that was... Um, Something Miller? Is, is it Miller? Yeah, or it was uh, Tim Miller? or Something like that. Yeah, sure. for the first one. And then the second one was someone else. But the third one's going to be... It sounds like it's going to be Sean Levy. So. I, think, I, think it, I think it needs to be. Yeah. 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 Uh, so anyways, that's my number... Sorry, what number are we on again? That's that my number seven. seventh pick. Yes. Uh, check this one out. It's great. Yes. Hey, if you have Netflix, which a lot of people would do, or you don't anymore because you don't like Netflix anymore. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's on there. Give it a watch. I'll talk about it more later. Thank you, Ashton. Uh, my number seven pick. This is probably one of my most anticipated movies of the year. Uh, and I'm not saying that like this, this movie is not as good as the six more movies that I watched this year. Uh, but it's kind of, it's it's hard. This making these lists were hard. Like it was. I I rewrote it before shooting this, uh. So it's different from yesterday's recording. <laughs> yes, exactly. Uh, Ashton, I think I'd be shocked by how low this one is. Okay. Uh, my number seven pick is the Batman. 
Okay. And number seven, yes. This movie, to me, is almost a perfect Batman movie. Uh, with, uh, who's the director? Hit Matt me. Reeves. Matt Reeves, thank you. Uh, with Matt Reeves being the director, uh, he gave this very grounded, dark, and kind of gross look into Batman. And I think that's what we been wanting a lot in our Batman movies because you you have obviously you have like the older ones like with uh, Val Kilmer, George Clooney, uh, but and the Michael Keaton ones that were are still very good to this day. And then you have the Dark Knight dire- Dark Knight trilogy directed by Christopher Nolan, which are probably I think I still think the Dark Knight is almost I think this and the Dark Knight are kind of on the same level. Hmm. Um, but they're two very different movies. Yeah. Um, this movie is Detective Batman more than like Vigilante Batman. You know what I mean? Um, I think the message in this movie is really good because he kind of spoiler, but that's okay. Um, Bat- Batman's more, uh, more, more represented as hope in this movie. Movie more than vengeance. He starts off the movie being like I'm vengeance, and then he's like I need to be hope. It's kind of it's awesome character character development and i think that the way that this is shot is my favorite part yeah lots of shadows lots of like lots of red lighting and ashley's going to talk about a scene later because i know this is on your list and uh the reason why we bought expensive seats so i won't say any more that's what i'm going to say for batman for for the batman for now and uh ashley let's move on to number six awesome all right well my number six pick for uh, for my favorite movies of the year is another comedic movie that we went to go see uh, with a couple people, and man, this one was this one it was so much fun. Uh, I've seen this one twice since then. Uh, it is the Lost City. Yes. So this movie, it's a comedy action comedy, I guess, starring uh, Sandra Bullock, Channing Tatum, um, and then. Yeah, you know, it's, I mean, they're, they're the two leads. Daniel Radcliffe is the villain. He does such a phenomenal job. Brad Pitt's in there, too. And, man. It's funny. It's fun. It's a really fun movie. Uh, I, I I enjoyed this one much more than I thought I would, quite frankly. Uh, it was, it just reminded me of, you know, kind of the glory days of my childhood, seeing some of these, like, super weird, like, jungle adventure movies right yeah um you know like what were all those ones featuring the rock that came out and or like journey and stuff journey to the center of the earth yeah journey and then you know also i'm thinking of a few others it has it reminds you of jumanji a little bit as well uh just some of these classic movies but it's very original it also kind of had some nims island vibes to me i don't know why uh but you know terrific terrific movie uh, the comedy is great. The pacing's great. Uh, it is like, you know, the chemistry is there with all these people. Daniel Radcliffe really does scare you a little bit as yes. well. Yes. Uh, he just did such an awesome job. Uh, go check this one out. I don't want to say too, too much about it. Cause I genuinely think that this will be one of those movies that surprises you a lot. I believe this one's also, I forget if it's on Netflix right now. I know it's on Paramount plus as I well. I don't think it's on Netflix. I know it's on Paramount Plus, okay. uh, so if you end up watching Sonic with a free trial or whatever, check this one out too because it is phenomenal. You have seven days to watch those two movies. You can yeah, do it. you can do it. We believe and if you're it. not watching Halo, then yeah, don't might as well it. maximize it. Watch, watch Jackass Halo. too. <laughs> no, don't. I'm kidding. I mean, yeah, sure. <laughs> we can endorse that movie. <laughs> Dang. Um. Yeah. No. That's a. That was a fun movie. That. Like, I expected it to suck. Honestly, yeah. I thought it was going to get a dumpster fire, but it ended up being a really fun movie with a lot of energy. And, uh, yeah, our friend that we went to see it with was pretty grossed out by one scene, but, you know, that's... Yeah, oh, well. <laughs> yeah. Uh, thanks, Ashton. Uh, my number six pick is a movie that I went out of my way to see because I... I it was a movie that I felt like I needed to see, and I'm glad I did. Uh... I saw this with my parents. Shout out. They're actually driving across Canada right now. So see you guys later. I'll pick, I'll pick you guys up, up from the airport. Uh, this movie is called Marcel the Shell with Shoes On. Oh, boy. This is a very cute and charming movie about family. Uh, and 
since this is a movie about family, it's very heartfelt, and you can take your family to see it. Wow, I said family a lot. And Dom Toretto will soon appear in this room if you see it yes, more times. Yes, where's Vin Diesel? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, it's it's a very experimental movie, I want to say. Uh, it's I don't believe it's based on a book. I think it's just an original film uh, by this one director. Can't, I'm blanking on his name right now, but he's in the movie. He stars and directs and has written the movie. Uh, it's about this shell with googly eyes and small sneakers who loses his family and wants to go looking for them. And uh, this is like a very heartfelt movie about what you would do for your family, how far you would go for your family, and just a journey about relationships and just things we would do to protect the ones we love. I don't want to say too much uh, because I want people to go see this. It's it's very hard to see actually, so I would. Say I still haven't seen it yet because it's. I really want to, but it's really hard so, to see. Oh, we, we can just go. We, just go. we might we have to. Go. Yeah, no, this is a movie. Actually, you had to go like downtown Vancouver at ten o'clock at night to see, and I'm glad I did. Uh, but it needs to be more accessible so people can watch it, so that it can get the love and attention it deserves. Because it's a cute movie with Jenny Slate, who is a amazing comedian, voice actor, and actress uh, doing a very high and squeaky role like this. She talks like this for the entire movie. And I know I'm not doing a very good impression, but that's okay. I just have a very high voice. Uh, so, yeah. Go give it a watch if you can. If you can't, call me and I'll, I'll, I'll find a theater for you <laughs> to go see it at. Or I think it's on demand already. But it's, pretty, it's like $25 rent, so I wouldn't recommend that too much. Um, yeah, that's my number six pick. Marcel the Shell with Shoes On. Sweet. A24 film as well, I believe. Yes, we love A24 films. We do. They're a studio who does very, very weird films. But yeah. they are probably some of the best films that have come out in the last few years, especially with a movie that we're going to talk about later. Yeah. Um, but Ashton, let's take a break. I think so. Um, let's get a drink because I'm thirsty. It's hot. Actually, it's kind of cold down here, but... Uh, let's get some Coca-Cola's down here and, uh, we'll let people take a break. Dope. Sound good? See you on a bit. Yeah, see you guys after the break. Welcome back, people. Well, 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 welcome back. Hello. Yes. Uh, yeah. So, we're gonna continue the list. I forgot to mention before, um, as much as we see movies, uh, we're big nerds of that stuff, if you can already tell, uh, we don't happen to see every single movie that yes. comes out whether it's for one reason or an- or another i know nat's seen more than i have there's still a bunch that i want to see i just didn't get the chance to see them in theaters uh you know there's a couple big ones like you know lightyear for example and stuff that we haven't seen so you know if if we don't say a movie that you're thinking about don't be offended we might not have seen it or it just really sucked and we didn't think it made our top 10 yeah um, <laughs> this is our own opinion yeah and Sometimes Ash and I don't agree on things. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. And sometimes, you know, we just don't end up seeing certain things. I think we're watching Lightyear pretty soon, though, because it's about to hit Disney+. Plus. I think we're going to watch it, like, two hours after we record yeah. this. Yeah. So, that's exciting. But, Ashton, do you know what else is exciting? What? Another honorable mention. Yes, I agree. Yes. Uh, so, I'll, I'll kick it off this time. Do it. Uh, Ashton already talked about this movie, uh, but... I just want to talk about it a little bit more. I give my thoughts. Uh, that movie is Doctor Strange Into the Multiverse. As an honorable mention. Not number five, but honorable mention. Okay. So, when we recorded yesterday, I had this number... What, what number? I, I have a pen and paper uh, right here. I put so it at fashion. number eight. And the reason why I put it at number eight is because I forgot I saw Downton Abbey. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Sonic 2 is a very fun movie that... I realized that I liked a lot more than I did. Same with the Wish Dragon. And honestly, like I said, uh, Multiverse of Madness is a very refreshing movie, uh, at least to me, because of the way Sam Raimi loves to use practical effects and uh, he loves to move the camera. And I know that, like, obviously Doctor Strange movies are very visually stunning with visual effects, but... The things he did practically were amazing. So good. Uh, and I'm glad he did it that way. And another reason why I love this movie uh, is the dynamics between the characters. That's my favorite part. I love character development. 
and the relationship between Doctor Strange and America Chavez was probably one of the best. Kind of a fa- father daughter relationship, and then with Wanda and Billy and Tommy, uh, obviously a mother and sons, and it just hit right for me. Like emotion, the emotional beats hit pretty good for me. Action was pretty good. It just felt a little sluggish at some points. Yeah. And uh, there's a lot of inconsistencies with the universe numbers. Like 616. Oh my gosh. Don't we get a starter with that? Yeah, no. Well, that, quick thing. How about we tell... So let's, let's break it down a little bit. So 616, you know, multiverse 616 is the comic book. Yeah, it's the uh, main universe. timeline in the comic books. And apparently, according to this movie, that this universe is 616. Because and, Kevin Feige said so. And we I have, love you, Kevin. I just don't agree with you on this. Yes, we have problems with that. Okay, but that's a whole different topic for another day. Maybe tomorrow. But uh, yeah, <laughs> that's uh, my honorable mention. And uh, I love the movie. Sweet. I mean, we, we have movie posters of it in our rooms. So We do. We do. Yes. yes. Um, Ashen, honorable mention, and then we'll go into the top five. Yeah, so my next honorable mention is another movie that we saw kind of at the beginning of the year. I actually almost forgot that this movie came out this year. I... I was fixing it up with some stuff that came out last year, but it was this year. Uh, it's a follow up. It's a sequel to a, another beloved murder mystery that came out a while ago uh, that many people enjoy. Um, murder, murder on the Orient Express is that one, and this movie is Murder or Death on the Nile. Yes, Death on the Nile. Great movie. Yeah. Good so you know, I re- I enjoyed it. I think between the two, though, I still appreciate and like the first one better just because that twist ending is so hard to beat for any other big murder mystery as well. Yes. And, you know, this movie had a lot to live up to. I think it did really great with sort of uh, the deductive process and all that that you'd want from a murder mystery. Um, You know, it brings back, uh, you know, similar casts that we that, you know, that we're used to um and it's it's pretty great that's that's what i'll say about it uh definitely see if you're a big fan of like murder mysteries you know it was a little predictable for me because like we were just kind of spouting out predictions in the theater and one of the ones that i just kind of put out there ended up being the right one um but it does still take you for a ride it is kind of fun if you if you enjoy murder mysteries i know i like them because it's really fun to just sit back and try to figure out like oh what's going on where am i being misled and where are these very subtle hints actually accurate and it doesn't mislead it it misleads you a lot but it also gives you a lot of like really big hints as to what is actually going on and it it kind of strikes a really good balance there so i I liked it check it out it's 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 like and it's a great looking movie too it is it's like visually stunning it doesn't need to be though it It, looks good for it, yeah, it doesn't really need to be that good looking. Um, you know, there I think there were some small issues I had with some of the CGI, uh, which, you know, I guess for this kind of movie, it does help out with budget things to shoot some of that stuff over CGI, especially since it takes place on the Nile on a boat. Uh, yeah, you know, but what can you do? It's not a Marvel movie, so I'm not going to like hammer it for, you know, not doing great because it doesn't have the same resources. Exactly. Um, yeah, great movie, though. It, it, the shots are amazing as well like it's shot very well and yeah i think it's it's a great one to check out if you're ever bored and on disney plus do it yes uh yeah it is on disney plus that's right yeah oh i can watch it again yeah dude might have to for real ashton do what it's time for i'm a little thirsty <laughs> oh you are thirsty huh yeah <laughs> yeah i'm thirsty too uh, so we have a can can of Coca Cola because we're thirsty. Let's crack it open it's here. Been a while we since we've done this in person. Dude, we haven't done this in a while. Yeah. Here, three, two, one, go. Oh, sorry for anyone listening with the uh, the subwoofer. <laughs> sorry, not sorry. Okay, here's an ASMR uh, Coke drinking. <laughs> there it is. Okay, sorry. I'm gonna be here sipping for the rest of the episode, but <laughs> deal with it. Okay. That's good stuff. Ashton, it's time for the top five. Yeah. Uh, my fifth favorite movie of the year is a movie I've been, look for, been looking forward to. I don't know if you were looking forward to it. Probably. If when, Once you figure out what it is. Uh, here, here's a hint. 
Oh, I, I actually no, I was gonna sing a song, but I'm not going to. Uh, that movie is Elvis, hey. directed by Baz Luhrmann, who, da, who did twenty, two thousand four's Moulin Rouge. I believe it's two thousand four with Ewan McGregor and Nicole Kidman, based which they turned into an actual Broadway musical, and it's great. Um, Elvis, I was absolutely floored by how good this movie was. Same. It was a. Im- it was experience. Baz Luhrmann is known for quick take, quick cuts, um, bright lights, and very like cerebral kind of experimental filmmaking. Uh, I don't want to say too much because I know Ashton has this on his list. Uh, but this is a movie that I instantly fell in love with because obviously we I like old things. So obviously I listened to a lot of Elvis back um, when I was in my Elvis phase. Because I love Leland Stitch. But that's a whole different thing. Uh, and this is a movie that I felt was very well done. I mean, we'll talk about... Ashton, we'll talk about stuff later. But this is a movie where... I got emotional about it. Because of how uh, wronged this man was. And how tragic his life was um, towards the end. And recently I've been watching... I've been replaying um, If I Can Dream... Um, the, you know, that's an iconic performance that he did on national TV. Very iconic. And his last performance, which is heartbreaking, um, really, because you can tell he, is, he doesn't have much left in him. Uh, Austin Butler is probably my favorite part of this whole movie. Uh, he plays, obviously, titular character Elvis. A fantastic job. Deserves an Oscar nom. Probably will get an Oscar nom, but also Tom Hanks brought it as his manipulative manager and that's all i want to say because i know ashton will say more and uh yeah my fifth favorite film of 2022 so far is elvis awesome yeah i i have a ton to say about that too so i'll stay quiet for now but my next movie here is one that nat already talked about uh it's one that i think this was one of our most anticipated movies of the year and i'm so happy that it made top 10 even for both of us just you know it was a terrific movie uh and that is the Batman. The Batman. So yeah, you know that did an awesome explanation on it already. Oh please, oh, shots. It's okay, I got you. I I'm got blushing. you. Uh, yeah. There, there's a, there isn't much to say. Um, there isn't much else to say about it. You know, we did a whole review, so I guess there is a lot that we have said about it. Go check that out. Uh, but it, it it's a terrific movie, you know. It's awesome to kind of see, you know. I've I've said this a lot, but Batman's a very dynamic character, and for these movies to instead of trying to grab his whole character, um, to just take one aspect or a couple aspects of sort of who Batman is, and just focus in on that, and just kind of like flesh that out, and really kind of you know what does this mean for the story. How would like a detective Batman movie look like this? And it, it does a great job like that. Um, again, like it, it really takes more of a noir detective side of things. And it does a really great job with it. Uh, Battinson is amazing. He's Robert terrific. Battinson. Robert Battinson. Um, he's, he's a terrific actor for, for this role. And, you know, even um, Catwoman yeah some i think i think i think zoe's my favorite zoe kravitz is my favorite Catwoman so far you don't like michelle pfeiffer i i i loved michelle pfeiffer but i feel like zoe kravitz kind of gave a little bit more of what at least what like they're two very different Catwoman. exactly um i think michelle pfeiffer would be a second for me though and hathaway's last i'm sorry can you name another Catwoman other than anne hathaway can oh yes i can jennifer morrison Oh, I forgot about that. Ah, <laughs> oh, no. Got him. I was going to say Eartha Kitt, but you know. Eartha Kitt? Yeah. Oh, fair enough. If it was for the old people who know Earth, who Eartha Kitt is. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Anyway, uh, terrific movie. That scene that Nat was alluding to was uh, the Batmobile scene. Oh, we my went goodness. To, so we saw this movie the first time. Bit of a pre-release thing. Thursday night pre-release. No big deal. No big deal or anything. We're just nerds. Yeah. And uh, we also went again. And we saw this in D box, and it was insane. The Batmobile scene in D box, where your seats just nonstop like moving along with the action, it's the second best D box experience I've had in a movie. And we'll We're talk getting about to the, the first, first best, for, yeah, soon, pretty soon here. 
but yeah this was just a wild experience i loved this movie inside and out uh you know i you know it's not a perfect one there's certainly different things i would change about it but i think matt reeves was an awesome director who am i to say that i can make it better you know we, i don't think we could i i don't i don't think i could either there are certain things that i think were kind of unnecessary but i want to add anything to it like it was it was a really great movie uh you know the the way it was shot like what now was saying it's just we were just like eye gazing this thing um because of how awesome a lot of these shots were especially for kind of following with the, the line of a detective noir movie does a lot there and yeah great movie if you haven't seen it already check it out uh very different type of superhero movie and i'm just excited to see sort of what dc is doing with having a bunch of these different stories going on instead of sticking all their eggs in one basket like what marvel's doing with the mcu they're expanding and doing things with the same characters just you know doing a lot of different things and i don't think that's a bad thing necessarily i can't wait to see what the sequels for this movie look like and sort of the the universe it builds on right yeah uh yeah i will say though this movie's i i don't want to th- don't i want to say that this movie's not for everyone yeah it's not it's very dark at some points there are some pretty brutal scenes in yeah. it uh, especially towards um abuse and assault yeah uh, and uh it's they show things that I was very surprised that they showed. So, yeah, hundred uh, percent. Great movie. Give it a watch. I mean, not if, if you want to. Yeah. Uh, my next pick, uh, is a movie that it's good. No, I'm kidding. No, so <laughs> this good. movie, Ash already talked about it. Um, that movie is the Adam Project. Uh, obviously, this movie is fun because Ryan Reynolds. Ryan, Reynolds is in it. Why can't I talk? Uh, Ashton pretty much said everything, but here's here's what I want to say. Uh, this movie. It, it when I watched it, I thought it was just gonna be some Ryan Reynolds blowing stuff up kind of type of movie, uh. But slowly turned into one of my favorite Ryan Reynolds movies of all time, uh, because of the emotional impact of the movie, right? Uh, especially with a father son relationship and uh, and a mo- mom and son relationship uh kind of hit home for me and it was really nice to see that these very comedic actors doing emotional roles like this because uh it it's a movie that kind of came at the right time because you know school is pretty stressful and just watching a fun heartfelt movie is very good very good for the soul uh and yeah i can't, i don't want to say too much more about it I just want people to go see it, right? Yeah. Um, and this, this, like he, like Ashton said, shot locally. I noticed like ten or twelve different spots that were shot that I've been to, uh, which was pr- pretty sick. And Ooh. give it a give it a watch, guys. Yeah, yeah, do it. That's my number four pick. Well, does I I did this for four. 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 <laughs> this is four. This is this four. is four. Live long and prosper. <laughs> Dang, I know I know this is. Four. Can you do it? I okay. I used to be able to. Wait. Move on and prosper, boys. Got like really spread it out. Oh, oh I used man. to be able to do it with the left. That's okay. But I've right. had some hand damage done since I was twelve. Yeah. Um. <laughs> Ashen. <laughs> anyways. Anyways. Um, number four. Number, numero four. Yes. Yes. Go for it, buddy. My number four pick is a movie that I saw very recently that. It's probably the one that I've seen most recently in theaters. We did a whole review on this. And there was a lot I really enjoyed about this movie. And I, you know, I would say, English teachers, if you're out there, use this movie. I guess there's the book too. But use this movie as the source material for homework assignments. No, we should say... High school teachers. High school teachers. Yes. Not middle school not teachers. Not middle school, not elementary. High school teachers. Uh, because there's just so much that you can get out of this. Even if you're like a film teacher, this is like a great movie to kind of teach stuff about stories with. And, you know, kind of it, it leans heavily into being sort of the societal commentary, um, the social societal commentary. We're really into those. Uh, if, if you've been listening to the, the pod for a while um and it's it's just incredible 
that is where the crawdads sing. Yes. Or is not like just to say where the crawdaddies sing. Where do the crawdaddies <laughs> sing, Ashton? Well, that's not really addressed in this movie, but you know what is? Dang. Murder. Murder. <laughs> Murder. Uh, yeah, this is an incredible movie. Uh, awesome acting. Um, just awesome like shots. Just an incredible setting. It kind of talks about uh, Kaya, who she's kind of been deemed by the society she's in as sort of this very different, weird, uh, you know, the Marsh girl. An outsider. She's an outsider. And this movie kind of makes you really consider, like, how we react as a society to our, the outsiders that we deem are outsiders. Um, it kind of goes into a lot of survival as well. Like, this is a survivalist story. Uh, Kaya lives a very traumatic childhood, and she's raised by the elements of the marsh. It's not like a whole Bear Grylls thing, but she does learn how to survive. She learns how to take care of herself. Uh, she experiences a lot of loss, a lot of abuse as a kid, and, you know, a lot of hate from the people that she's around. And it's really sad. So when she's on murder, or when she's on trial for murder, um, you know, it kind of really gets you thinking through like what are what are some of the things that are going on right now like current events that are going on right now that you know maybe sometimes sometimes we kind of go out there as a society and say like you know you're different i'm scared of you so i'm gonna automatically be turned against you and it, it just it does incredible with the storytelling with the setting with the scene with everything um taylor swift wrote a song for this one which makes it even better uh but honestly I think this is one of the low key hits of the year. Check this one out. Like it deals with a lot of sensitive stuff. So understandable if you know, it, it deals with things like rape with abuse. Uh, it deals with like murder for that's the biggest thing, I guess. Yeah. And if you're not, if you're sensitive to those things, this might not be the one for you, but you know, if, if you're willing to give this one a shot, otherwise it's like a terrific film shot beautifully it really misleads you in a lot of ways, makes you think things in a good uh, way, in a good way. It misleads you in a good way because of the whole murder aspect. You're trying to piece this together too, as much as the people in the movie. Um, and it, it does it in such an awesome, subtle way where by the end of the movie, I was like, wow, I really got fooled. We all did. We all did. I, was, I read the, the drive home. I was like, man, how did I not see that coming? Um, I'm not going to spoil it. If you want to listen to a spoiler review about it, listen to our, I think it was our last episode. Yes, our, our last episode. Yeah. yeah. Give, it a, give it a listen. Give it a listen. It's terrific. Uh, like the movie and the episode too, I'd say. A little pat on our own pat, shoulders. Pat on the shoulder. Yeah. 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 Good job. Yeah. Where the crawdads sing. Number four. Thank you, Ashton. Okay. So, my number, th my, oh, top three. Wow. We're, we're in top, top three, three now. now. Okay. My top three, my third pick, sorry, not my top three. My third pick um, is a movie that I often tell people, this is why I go watch movies. This is why I love just everything about cinema because it's a format that that is very open for expression and that's why different directors give different things and some people agree with the other directors and some don't, but that's okay. And that movie is Everything, Everywhere, All at Once. Now, this is a movie that Ashton and I saw together. And this is a movie that we didn't expect really much out of it. Not at all. Uh, but this is the most... Ex my One of my favorite theater experiences in the last while. At least the first time we saw it, which was like me, Ashton, and like three other people. But then it got... But then it got the hype, and then everyone went to see it. We saw this before it was hyped up. Yeah, we were the OG. We were the OGs. OG bagel people. You'll get that if you see the movie. I uh, know this movie starring uh, Michelle Yeoh, Stephanie Su, uh, James James Hong. I think that's his name, and I forgot the guy who plays Short Round from Indiana Jones. We always forget his name. Yeah. And Jamie Lee Curtis, and this movie is a lot of fun. It is a multiverse movie that acts like a family drama as well and it's a heck of a ride it is, it is. um there's some scenes that you can't look away from because it's so beautiful and then there's some scenes that you just can't look away because it's like watching a house on fire 
but <laughs> this movie is a lot. It has a lot more layers to it than you think it would. It's an onion. You're peeling back different layers, and it keeps on going. And then because it's onion, it makes you cry at the end. Uh, but yeah, wow. <laughs> give this a watch. I'm not gonna say too much, but give it a watch. Um, yeah, please, just watch it. Uh, I think it's one of the most extravagant films in the last decade. A hundred percent. Yes. Um, hey, my parents liked it, so you never know. All right, there you go, Ashen. Yeah. Ashen, top three, baby. Number three. Top three. Here we go. Number three for me. Another movie that Nat already talked about. That is Elvis. Dude, Why this movie Elvis actually. Oh, thanks for singing like my favorite Elvis song. This movie actually blew me away. Uh, you know, when you go to a movie like this, where it's a biographical movie or bi- bi- biography, biopic, biopic. Biogra- biographical, uh, biographical movie. movie. I'm go, sorry, gotcha, I'm bro. like really out of it today. Uh, yeah, a biopic. When you go into a biopic like this, especially about someone who's as well known and as well loved as Elvis, su- like someone who's just super iconic, it's natural to be a little scared. And now I will admit, I'm not like the biggest Elvis fan. I respect him. I love him. I listen to his music. Um, I, I enjoy his stuff, but you know, there's other people out there that would qualify as like hardcore Elvis fans. And even for me, I kind of knew going into this, that there's a lot of pressure for them to get this right. Cause if they don't, you know, riots will start, maybe not that extreme, but like people would get really mad and Holy crap, this movie just blew me away. Um, it's, it's incredible. You know, Austin Butler, like what Nat was saying before, just does a phenomenal job at playing this character. He took a two-year break from doing any other roles just to fully invest himself in this one role. He had to. He had to because he he also felt the pressure, which is remarkable, too, because, you you know, you don't want any actor who's going to say, oh, I'm a good enough actor. I can just pull this off easily. Uh, you want someone who's who understands the weight of, wow, this is a remarkable person with so many layers and we just have to get this right otherwise this could be a career breaker yeah he understood what an honor it was to play a role like yeah this. he understood what assignment. we appreciate about it yeah uh even priscilla presley like elvis's wife told him like you know this is like you you have large shoes to fill there's a, like a big weight on your shoulders be scared <laughs> and she has even been one of his biggest supporters saying that this movie is phenomenal, just so accurate to how things were back then. Now, of course, it's not 100 percent. The movies or like the movie does take some liberties because it's a movie. It has yeah. to. Uh, and, you know, it's it's still really great, though. Um, I know my dad was one of those Elvis fans who he like he knew like when he first saw the trailer, he didn't think Austin Butler really looked like Elvis or. You know, he's, he's heard better impressionists sound like Elvis, but then he went to see this movie and he said it was his favorite thing he's seen in theaters in a long time. It's it's remarkable. You know, even Austin Butler did such a great job at doing the voices for Elvis. There are multiple voices to Elvis because he started out as a young person and ended his life kind of, you know, kind of in, in a middle aged area. Yeah. And throughout that time frame, your voice naturally changes. He t- used to talk. A lot quicker he's just seeing a lot quicker and a little a little bit higher pitched than you know by the the end of his career when he was a little bit more confident on stage knew what he was doing knew the sounds he wanted to achieve with his songs uh and austin butler just nailed all that it's just there's a science behind it um and it's 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 remarkable so check out this movie uh it it's just crazy uh even if you don't love elvis if you just like biopics or if you just like good cinema I would recommend this one. Uh, again, third favorite for a reason. Remarkable. Give it a watch. That's a good pick. Yeah. Yeah. You know, a little biased, but you know, that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, my second pick is a movie that I ex- didn't expect to love. Um, but then I, I went to, th- after the movie, I'm like, sorry, after the movie, I'm like, dang, this is like one of the most one of the best films I've seen in a long time, and I I I don't t- I don't say that lightly, like 
for those who like know me, I'm I'm like the movie snob to you. I legit am the movie snob to a lot of people because they're like, oh, that was good. I'm like, well, you see, uh, they didn't do shots right. Um, they didn't really follow the rules a third. I thought that the camera work was sloppy and there was no character development. So I'm one of those guys. <laughs> um, but this movie, Where the Crawdads Sing, is probably one one of the best book adaptations out there. Other than Pride and Prejudice. I think that's the top one, honestly. Fair. Or I want to remember for those who are yeah. fans of the of the of this podcast. But Where the Crawdads Sing was a movie that I kinda just wanted to see off a whim. Like I know I've been wanting to see it, but I I just decided to go see it. I'm like, Mom, wanna go watch this movie with me? And she's like, Bet. So um this is a movie where it it hit me harder than I thought it was going to because of the subject matter. Obviously, Ashton said it was about, like, assault relationships. There's a there's a pretty brutal rape scene in there. And uh, I think it's a very important movie, especially with things coming out nowadays. You know, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Especially with uh, the topics happening, like, in the real world. And, like, we talked about this in depth on our actual review about a Taylor Swift song and what it means to the to the story and what the the marsh represents and it's a beautiful story of survival but mostly about this girl defying the odds and people treating her different just because she's different and i think that's a big story because we live in a world where people cancel each other because of one bad thing. And I get it. Like, I get it. And, um, like, I know we, I know I've done some bad things that I should have got canceled for, but, you know, it's, it's story of just people who are good, um, and doing the right thing. And man, I didn't expect that to get emotional, but it did. So, um, where the crowd at sing my second favorite movie of the year so far, give it a watch. It's again. It's a very remarkable movie. Uh, not for everyone. Not though. for everyone. But if you're into that sort of thing, even if you're just willing to take a chance on it, I don't think you'll be too disappointed. Like I know I want to take some family members to see this. Like it's it's crazy. It's really good. I think your sister would love it. I think so too. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Actually, number two. Number two. Mm. Okay. Mm. So. I Matt know knows what's is. coming. Um, this was okay. It was a, it was a bit of a, you know. Oh, is this gonna be my favorite, or is the southern hey, gonna be my favorite? Hey, don't say too much. But <laughs> <laughs> uh, this next movie is one that I've seen twice in theaters, and it's it's crazy. My favorite D box experience of all time. One of the biggest movies of the year, I would say. The biggest movie of the lead, one of the biggest movies of the lead actor's career, at least, you know, in terms of money, uh, and that is Top Gun 2. Top Gun Maverick. Top Gun Maverick, yes. I mean, Top Gun 2, Top Gun Maverick. No, 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 Top Gun Maverick. Wow, he's, can you tell he's faithful? <laughs> Putting my, my metaphorical feet down on this one. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. Yeah, so Top Gun Maverick is just a remarkable movie. You know, I grew up, um, I... I watched the first one when I was about nine years ago for the first time when I was about like 12, 13. And I had a lot of other crap going on when I watched this. So it didn't really like stick out to me too much. I was like, Oh, it's an eighties movie. And okay. It has like fighter jets and stuff, but I didn't really get it back then. And with all the hype building up for this movie, I rewatched the first one and I was like, dang, that's a really good movie. And then I went to see this one. And I was like, dang, that's even an even better movie. Uh, you know, it, it's it's crazy. Uh, the practical effects. I'm a sucker for practical effects. And with, you know, directors and uh, camera workers just taking these risks uh, for some of these shots. And they had, like, real planes flying in this. It was a big production. They had to teach the actors how to shoot with IMAX cameras mounted to planes. They had to teach military fighters how to do that as well. And man, it is, it paid off. You know, it's, uh, I would say this is like the biggest, one of the biggest movies um, that probably 
has helped keep theaters alive because this movie was made for the theater. Yeah. Uh, it is 100% Absolutely. like, like theater bait. Uh, if you didn't get a chance to see this in theaters, I'm sorry. Try to watch this on the biggest screen you can now. Uh, you know, we saw this, we saw this one in D box. I regret not seeing this one in IMAX. Missed out. I missed out. Missed out. Um, D box was really great though. I, uh, you know, because there's just so much going on, uh, with like the fighter jets and everything in this movie, especially that last like big scene, uh, your chair is like a roller coaster. Like the person next to me was like swearing like a sailor. Yeah, it was so funny. It, it was it was so funny. There's just so much happening in this, and I I think that you know most people that have seen this movie too have had a lot to say about it. I I know like it's kind of been one of those movies that has brought a lot of people together. You know, people that were fans of the first one that are now in their forties, uh, like thirties, forties, fifties. Uh, you know, even my my grandmother went to see this one with me for the second time, and she really enjoyed it as well uh it's it's crazy you know i know my even my youngest brother uh he went to see this and he said it's probably his favorite movie of the year because it's just it's just so dang good good. uh you can tell so much work was put into this so much passion so much effort tom cruise didn't want to make just another sequel he wanted it to be a very tasteful and well thought well worked on sequel uh he didn't let this release straight to like hbo max and crave uh during covid because he he knew this was a theater movie. I'm so happy he made that choice. Um, Thanks, Tom. So that's my that's my number two pick. And I know that Nat probably has a little bit more to say about that well, one. Well, Ashton, I want to say thank you for introing my number one pick of the year so far. <laughs> uh, you know, obviously, for those who know me, I'm a sucker for Top Gun. So that's why Top Gun Maverick is my number one film of the year so far. I don't think it's gonna be. I don't think anything's gonna beat it. I'll be very surprised. Like what? Like Minions is gonna beat it? No, I already saw that movie. It didn't. Um, but uh, Top Gun, I'm gonna, it's gonna get sound really. St- I'm gonna sound really stupid here, but Top Gun is more than movie to me. It's like how I connect with a lot of people, especially my dad, because I saw this movie by accident when I was. I want to say like one. nine or ten. The first one, yeah. Uh, I saw the first one. When I was yeah, nine or ten one. by accident, I thought it was a different movie, and I'm so glad I sat down and watched that with my dad and uh, a family friend. I, I, I vividly remember this day, but for the life of me, I cannot remember, like, tests and stuff. So, <laughs> went uh Top Gun Maverick is better than the first movie. I will say that. I can, now that I've seen it five times, yes, five times. I can honestly say that because it does everything so much better and in 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 uh in like story wise and practical effects wise um and it's a film that it's a spectacle. I would say it's a spectacle. Uh, it's the biggest blockbuster of in the last while. I don't think it's it, I would say it's the biggest one since Endgame at least. Uh, yeah, you yeah. know, it's it's definitely, like, the biggest summer blockbuster. In a long time. In a very long time. Yeah. Well, because Endgame, a lot of people were invested in that already. But a lot of people had never seen the first Top Gun. And I really don't blame them because it is a very obscure film that you kind of have to, like, like the source material. You got to, like, planes. You got to, like, 80s music to like. And that's how I got really got into 80s music. And, uh, you know, just... I, I, I've been in the planes since I was, like five or whatever and you know it's it's a very heartfelt movie to me like i do have multiple top gun posters in my room um i do i have almost i almost have top gun the the original movie on every format possible and it's a movie where i'm like you i couldn't ask for like a better movie to start the summer off because it came out in may um i saw it two days before it came out technically and one of one I saw an IMAX the first time. One of the best theater experiences in a long time. Guys were dressed up in flight suits. I wore my 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 aviator jacket with my aviator glasses on, and I felt like I was in the movie. And uh, it's 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 hard not to get romantic about this type of stuff because like I know it's just it, at the end of the day, it's just a movie, and 
I, I, I just can't wait to show more people of this movie. And yeah, that's my number one favorite movie of 2022. I'm not even going to say so far because nothing's beating it. Nothing. Yeah. But like what what's coming out? <laughs> Probably nothing that's going to beat it. Watch as it's Black Panther 2. Dude, yeah, I don't know. It looks great. It looks better than the first one. It that's do, what I'm saying. Does, yeah. Namor? Yeah. Come on, bro. Aquaman? <laughs> Possibly Doctor Doom. We're going to release another episode later talking about some of this stuff, so stay tuned. Yes. Um, and if you're listening to this in the future, you might have already listened to that. So I, I hope it was good because we haven't recorded it yet. Anyway. Right. Ashton, let's wrap this sucker let's up and tell us your like number one Christmas favorite movie present, of the year. Christmas in July present. Even Woo! though it is now let's August go. 1st. Let's go. Everything, everywhere, all at once. Hands down, my favorite movie of the year. So much better than Top Gun. I'm kidding. It was, it was a really hard. You want to fight me? It was a very okay. hard well, toss up between the two. Two very different movies. Two very, yeah, two very different movies. And, you know, I will say that as much as I enjoy Top Gun, I really liked this movie, partly because of what, you know, what, what Nat said before. It was a movie that kind of reminded him why he loves movies. And same same for me. There's just so much that happens in this movie. It's such a complex movie, but when you watch it, it feels so easy to understand and simple. Um, it's the best multiverse movie I've seen ever, I would say. Like, even far beyond anything that Marvel's put out. Anything Screw that Screw you, put Marvel! Out. You know, even even far beyond like the DC animated movies, which yeah. I love, um, it's it's insane. Yeah, you know, it, it kind of one minute it's like an action movie, and the next it's like this super like random, bizarre, like different sort of genre, like this like love like genre or this family drama or this rock drama like drama. I don't know. Genre. <laughs> it's like it rocks. Rocks. So funny. So funny. You know. It's it has everything, it is everywhere, and it's happening all at once in this it movie. Uh, it's so it's so awesome, you know. Even like just just the amount of effort that was put into this movie over COVID as well, from the actors and from the uh, production team that filmed it. It's an A twenty four production as well, which you know we talked about a little bit before. It's they're fantastic, very well done. Yeah, you know, this movie kind of went viral. It blew up a bit. And I hope that more people can kind of see this one, too, for those that haven't. Because I honestly think it should be bigger than it is. Um, It's just, it's incredible. Uh, Watch it if you haven't already, if you're one of the few people that haven't. I know I still want to watch this movie with a ton of other family members. You know, I took my brothers to this one as one. They both really enjoyed this. And it's, it's so good. You know, even I saw this twice and even on the second watch, it's still as funny. Uh, it's still as like, I mean, you know what to expect, but it still feels very unexpected. And it's it's insane. I love it. Top wow. movie of the year, baby. So far. What nerds we are, man. Yeah. What freaking nerds. <laughs> for real. I mean, I don't want I don't want to speak for Ashen, but I'm not the smart nerd. I'm just like the geeky nerdy nerd who reads comic books and watches a lot of movies. <laughs> I think we're both kind of in that genre. Yeah, well, no, you're smarter than I am. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm fairly certain you get better grades than I. I, I, I think, I think our current transcripts would speak otherwise. Well, to be fair, we're in different programs. That's so, true. well, we used to be in the same program. We did, but uh, yeah, now we're in different programs. Yeah. Uh, guys, thank you so much for listening slash watching. If you're watching on YouTube to this episode, uh, we will have a couple more out this week. Uh, we're just. We would have shot more today, but we woke up late, and we yesterday's episode was a was crazy. Yeah. Uh, but we are watching a movie tomorrow. We I don't, do you want to tell them which movie we're watching tomorrow? I think we should wait. Okay. You know, actually, this leads me to something else. Uh, if you want any more in depth kind of reviews on some of these movies, if we haven't already done a review on them, it's probably in one of our just chilling episodes. We've done yeah. three at this point, I believe. Uh, go listen to those because we talk a lot more in depth about some of the, or sorry, not just chilling, what you're watching, and also just ch- chilling sometimes. A little bit of both. A little bit of both, but what you're watching especially. Uh, we've gone on super in depth about some of that stuff in there, and it's you know we we have a lot of fun in those as, as well, uh, a lot of great conversation, and yeah, again we talk a lot like in depth about some of these things, and I think pretty much everything that's been on these lists we've talked about at if, one point or another. At yeah. one point or another. Yeah. So, yeah, go check those out. Yeah. Um, also, um, we are recording a very special video Friday. Yeah. I'm very excited. Uh, 
probably the most excited I've been to re- record a podcast in a while. We have a couple friends coming on, and uh, we're going to talk about stuff. I won't say what, but uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. It will be. And be uh, depending on how, how good the movie is tomorrow that we watch, we will. We might do an independent review on it. We might. You we'll, know, we're going to a very fancy pre 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 screening of a yeah. movie. So if you know what movies are coming out, are big. Yeah, maybe it'll be off the rails. Oh, what yeah. a big spoiler! Yeah, right there. do you know yeah. what? I don't care. I'm excited for the movie. I see. Actually. What a shot in the dark. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, guys, thank you. Uh, that it, Ashton? I think so. All right. Um, guys, until next time, I'm Nat. And I'm Ashton. And we, we are, are the Nerds, Nerds in Flannel. Flannel. Peace.